A hero's job is to risk his life, to make his lip service a reality. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rodster review. Today I will be reviewing the third season of the popular anime series My Hero Academia. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, this season was nowhere near as good as the previous two seasons. There was a lot I still enjoyed from this season, but it had some major flaws that I'll talk about later in this video. This season adapted three arcs from the manga, the forest training camp arc, the hideout raid arc, and the provisional license exam arc. Then we got a little introduction into the Shi Hasakai arc. These arcs were very interesting to say the least. The first episode of the season was a filler episode. This episode was unsatisfactory and it just felt like a waste of an episode. It didn't teach me anything new and it didn't even really recap the previous events. The season's slow start was definitely a turn off for me. But after that horrible episode, the story basically picked up right where the last season ended. Although a few people failed the final exams, everybody was given permission to go to summer camp and thus the forest training camp arc begins. Now right off the bat, I wanna say I have mixed feelings about this arc. There were some cool moments, but a lot of parts were also very underwhelming. This arc somewhat centered around a little boy who goes by Kota, which rhymes with Shota, and he criticizes hero culture because it took away his parents. This is a somewhat foolish and dumb criticism, which is to be expected since he is a child, I guess I can't expect him to have as extensive of a criticism as the hero killer Stain did, but this is precisely the problem. It is expected that this show is going to evolve with their criticisms of hero culture and for it to bring more captivating villains, but in this arc we got Kota instead. For those of you who do not remember, Kota basically hated hero society because he doesn't believe that the term hero and villain have any value. It's just people killing each other with one group, the heroes, being glorified for participating. Right off the bat, it is easy to notice that he is missing the fact that the heroes are those who stop the villains from doing bad things. The villains won't just stop existing because the heroes disappear, so I can't really connect with this guy's ideology like I could with Stains. Now let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> The one million percent Delaware Detroit smash. I have seen so much criticism of this moment online and I believe that it definitely deserves all of it. Now, for those of you who do not know, a percentage is a part of a whole, a rate, an amount in each hundred. Throughout the show, we've seen percentages used to demonstrate how much power Deku was using from his quirk one for all. It let the audience know where he was in his mastery of his quirk, and that is why we knew that he could handle up to 5% without breaking his bones. So when Deku claimed to use 1 million percent of his quirk, everything was just confusing. If he can go higher than 100%, then wouldn't that 1 million percent just be his new 100 percent? 100 percent is supposed to be his full power. The fact that he can go higher than that just makes the one for all quirks percentages pointless. Like when he moves up to 8 percent later on this season, I don't really feel anything because I found myself asking, well, 8 percent of what? While these percentages used to be a decent way to track Deku's progress, they are now extremely artificial. In chapter 78, Horikoshi explained that he really wasn't using 1 million percent, but it was a way of expressing his intense emotions. If that was his intention, then he definitely did not convey it well in the manga, and it definitely did not translate well to the anime either. But enough of this negativity. You think that after all of that criticism, I didn't enjoy anything about this arc, but that is just not true. It was very cool to learn how the students of class 1A trained their quirks. The extra details were nice because it just reminded me that quirks were a physical ability that can grow stronger. It was also very nice to see a follower of Stain in this arc. I completely forgot he existed and it's probably because he didn't even do much, but it is definitely dope that we got to see some of the hero killer's legacy represented in this arc. And while I don't like the 1 million percent moment and Muscular really isn't that captivating of a villain, there is no denying that the animation during that fight scene was amazing. And Bakugo getting kidnapped was a shocking event, 
I always just assumed that Deku would be able to rescue him in time, so it was a major upset when he didn't. This event demonstrated to me that there are other consequences for Deku overusing his quirk other than breaking his bones, because if he hurts himself too much, he won't be able to protect and save people like a hero would. Another exciting element that this season added is the idea that there may be a traitor amongst the teachers at UA, because the students were supposed to be in a secret location, yet the villains knew exactly how to get there. I actually have a theory about this. So during the villain raid, one villain had a quirk that emitted poisonous gas that put people to sleep. When I saw this, I noticed immediately that it is very similar to Midnight's quirk, Somnambulist. She uses her quirk to create a gas that temporarily knocks someone out. These quirks are not the same, but they are similar enough to make me wonder if they are related at all. If Midnight has a brother, cousin, son, or even nephew who's part of the League of Villains, then she is definitely a candidate for whomever the traitor is at UA. This is just a small theory and it is probably wrong, but it is just something I noticed. So while this arc was not the best, there were many elements about it that I very much enjoyed. I also realized that this arc is more of a setup for the next arc, which is amazing by the way. Let's talk about the Hideout Raid arc right now. So, this arc was definitely more enjoyable than the previous one. This is the first arc where we got to learn more about the depth of Bakugo's character. Up until now, he's been portrayed as an angry boy who tells people to die. His personality isn't very hero-like, and I am glad that got addressed in this arc. But during Aizawa's speech is where I first learned that Bakugo is truly heroic and that his violent language is just a reflection of his determination to be the best. It wasn't obvious to me when I first watched the series, but when I rewatched seasons 1 and 2, it became quite apparent. Bakugo has always been a complex character, but it was just too difficult for me to realize upon first viewing. This means that Horikoshi is just amazing at foreshadowing character development and takes advantage of the audience's initial perception of characters. There's also some evolution in Tenya's character in this arc as well. It was more subtle, but I noticed that he allowed the other students to break the rules to be heroic as long as they did not get themselves into any big fights. He still was kind of a stickler for the rules, but just the fact that he was okay with breaking some of them just shows that he had recognized that sometimes the rules get in the way of true heroism. Even Tenya Ida has learned a bit from Stain. Another thing I liked about this arc is that Deku was in a position of leadership yet again. He came up with a plan that incorporated everyone's quirks, well, except Momo's, I guess. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never it's cool to see him work with other people like that because it just makes him feel different than All Might. I know that All Might doesn't always work alone, but most of the times I see him taking on villains in crime by himself. He is the symbol of peace, the single pillar that everyone can rely on for support. And while Deku is trained to become the next symbol of peace, I don't think he'll be exactly like All Might was. At the end of this arc, we saw why relying on one person as a pillar for support for the world was a bad idea, because now villains will believe that no one else can challenge them, despite the fact that there are still multiple capable heroes. But seeing Deku as a leader in this arc, in the whole show, made me realize that he is not really going to do it alone. When Deku reaches the top, he'll probably have people there with him, they will all be pillars of support with Deku being the leader amongst them all. That is why the Bakugo rescue operation was the best part of this arc and maybe even the best part of this season. I've already talked about how much I love the teamwork, but the animation was also just stunning. I felt a rush of happiness when Kirishima called out to Bakugo and then he came rushing to be by his side. I have no idea why though. Maybe it's because it was just such a wholesome moment and it made me realize that there are people that Bakugo does care about. The next big emotional event that happened in this arc was the United States of Smash. Not only was the fight between All Might and All For One animated really well, but it also showed how important All Might's status as the symbol of peace was. When I first watched it, I honestly believed that All Might was going to die. I knew that he was getting weaker and weaker, so he probably wouldn't be able to stand up to someone as powerful as All For One. And I was right for the most part. He was losing most of the battle, and he was only able to get the upper hand once he realized that there were people relying on him to win. 
So he technically overcame all for one with the power of friendship. And a lot of people bash on the power of friendship, but it was handled really well in this scene because it was used to convey that All Might was a hero whom everyone relied on. It was as if everyone gave All Might their strength so that he could fight the battles that they never could individually. And this arc did have one major consequence. The symbol of peace is no longer amongst the living. While the person is still alive, the hero known as All Might is dead. It was nice to see some kind of repercussion at the end because it felt like the story was actually moving forward. If All Might were still able to be a hero after all of that, then the story would have felt like it was beginning to stagnate. Now I am looking forward to seeing what a world without All Might is gonna even look like. While I did love this arc, there were a few elements that were somewhat off-putting to me. And it mostly had to deal with Shigaraki and All For One's relationship. Horikoshi was attempting to make me feel sympathy for these characters at times, like when Shigaraki wanted to protect All For One because he felt like he could do much without him. It was clear that he looked up to All For One like a father, but I just didn't really care. All For One also tried to make it sound like he had a lot of grief in his life because All Might put a stop to his plans. Again, Horikoshi was trying to make me feel sympathy for this character, but he is a bad guy to my knowledge. All Might stopped him because he was ruining other people's lives, so the sympathy appeal just kind of felt artificial. Unless I get to know more about these villains' backstories and ideologies, then I can't really feel any real sympathy for them. But I did like the ending of this arc with Deku's mother not wanting Deku to go back to UA. It just brought me back into the reality of Midoriya's normal, non-hero world. I got the sense that he also had a responsibility to his family that he couldn't just completely ignore, because then it would get in the way of his dream to be the number one hero. Twas a good ending to a magnificent arc. <laughs> Now let's move on to the provisional license exam arc. The worst arc of this season. Now, this arc wasn't actually that bad, but it was just very forgettable. Nothing important really happened in this arc. So I guess that's why I liked it the least out of all the arcs in this season. The symbol of peace is gone, Shigaraki is on the loose and probably is recruiting more villains, but this arc seemed to just put all of that to the side because we need to see Deku obtain his provisional hero license. Honestly, the provisional license exam felt like a side story that could have just been an OVA or an ONA. It just felt like the main story and plot got sidelined for a small side quest. That doesn't mean that there isn't plenty to enjoy in this arc though. One thing I liked is that we were able to get some more world building by seeing other famous hero schools and by getting introduced to plenty of new characters and new quirks. Horikoshi's creativity honestly shines through the creation of these unique quirks. And another thing I enjoyed about this arc was the development of Deku's shoot style. I know a lot of people online meme about Deku's shoot style because Deku using his legs instead of using his arms is the most basic power up ever, but it was a creative solution that made a lot of sense. And now that he has his shoot style, it seems like he was making one for all his own quirk. It is just refreshing to see Deku do something that is different from All Might. However, I also completely understand why some people do not like this shoot style, and that is because it was just over height. I understand that using his legs would be a big revelation to him at first, but then during the exam, it seemed like every time he used his shoot style, Deku had some deep inner monologue about how he is now using his legs. It definitely gets very annoying, and the more it's emphasized, the more ridiculous it all seems. And before I forget, I wanted to mention that I did not like that random filler episode that took place in the middle of the arc. It was an episode that was supposed to promote the My Hero Academia movie that was coming out at the time. I've seen the movie, and it's a great movie, but the episode had almost no connection to that movie. 
We just saw Class 1A doing a hero training drill for most of the episode, then small hints towards the plot of the movie during that episode. I don't know why this episode was included in the season. I mean, Studio Bones basically just used an entire episode for their show as an advertisement. It just felt really cheap and cash grabby. They just removed any tension the arc had and that just made the arc even worse. My Hero Academia is literally one of the most popular shonen anime out right now. And they only needed to drop a trailer to get me and literally everybody who watched the show hyped to see their movie. Sorry for the rant, but it just feels like this was one of the worst decisions made by Studio Bones. Anyways, the last part of the arc was the Deku vs Bakugo fight. And it was amazing. The animation was so clean that Deku literally just turned into Michael Jackson. And during the battle we got more insight into Bakugo's character and emotional state. I never even realized that his superiority complex would clash so hard with the events of the previous arc. He hated himself because he believed that it was his weakness that forced All Might, the hero he looked up to, to retire. Not only that, but Deku, a person who Bakugo saw as insignificant in comparison to himself, got the ultimate acceptance of this hero. All of these conflicted feelings finally led to a boiling point which resulted in this fight and it was a very satisfying way to end this arc. This season ended with a small taste of the next arc the Shi Hasekai arc. We got introduced to the three strongest students in UA called the Big Three. We saw an excellent demonstration from Mirio about how one can take a quirk that seems useless and hone it into something fantastic. When I first saw his quirk in action, I immediately thought it was one of the most overpowered quirks in the show. I mean, he was literally able to take on all of Class 1A, a class who has fought multiple villains and defeat them without taking any damage. It was the most godlike whooping I have ever seen. But after I learned about all the weaknesses of his quirk, like not being able to use any of his senses while the quirk is activated, I learned that it is less about the quirk's power, it is all about how you use that quirk. It was a nice note to end on and it definitely built some hype for the next season. Before I wrap this video up, I wanted to talk a bit about the openings of this season. Of the two we got, my favorite was definitely Odd Future. Uh, the song just has a lot of energy right off the jump and I just can't keep myself from singing or dancing along to the music. And the visuals are just amazing. There's a clear contrast between the heroes and the villains and it just looked so beautiful. It is definitely one of my favorite openings in all of My Hero Academia. Overall, the third season of My Hero Academia had its highs and lows. I'd probably give it a 6 or a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6.7 out of 10, because despite the flaws, I still very much enjoyed rewatching this season. I'm very curious as to what Shigaraki's motives are, and I'm very excited to see how Deku will evolve as a hero. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like into Delaware, Detroit, smash that subscribe button to see more My Hero Academia content on this channel. And let me know what you thought about this season in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.